Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is April 21st, 2024, and we are in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. We're going to read chapter 22 today. All right, so what's going on here? Well, we saw some things in our last readings. We've, we've seen that this, this isn't just one... Uh, this is one prophecy, but it isn't just given at one time. It was given over multiple years through multiple kings. At this point, we're at the King Hezekiah, so this is about 720 B.C., somewhere in there. Uh, we know that because it's going to reference Shebna, which was the chief steward of Hezekiah. Calls him out for, for not doing his job properly. We're going back to, Jeru to, to Jerusalem and to Judea. So again, this prophecy has been given over a long period of time and, and people were kind of receptive, but they've gone right back to where they were. So they've said, eh, well, you know, oh, God's going to wipe us out. Well, let me, we repent. Oh, he didn't wipe me out right away. Well, eh, then what, why do I need to repent? So the people have returned to their ways. They're starting to think, well, maybe Isaiah doesn't know what he's talking about. Even though we've seen nations get wiped out that he told us were going to be wiped out within years and it happened, Maybe he was he doesn't have a, have the insight. Much to their detriment. This this is a period that, that God is, is trying to warn as many people as possible to repent, and he's giving them as much chance as he can get. So if they've hardened their heart against God, well that that's on themselves. And we are indeed running out of time for Judah. They're they're getting ready to be sent into exile. So let's go ahead and we're going to read Isaiah chapter 22. The burden against the valley of vision. What ails you now that you have all gone up to the housetops? You who are full of noise, a tumultuous city, a joyous city. Your slain men are not slain with the sword nor dead in battle. All your rulers have fled together. They are captured by the archers. All who are found in you are bound together. They have fled from afar. Therefore I said, look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Do not labor to comfort me because of the plundering of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and treading down and perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountain. Elam bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kir uncovered the shield. It shall come to pass that your choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. You removed the protection of Judah. You looked in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. You also saw the damage to the city of David, that it was great. And you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You numbered the houses of Jerusalem and the houses you broke down to fortify the wall. You also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but you did not look to its maker. And nor did you have respect for him who fashioned it long ago. And in that day the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning, for baldness and for girding with sackcloth, but instead joy and gladness slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Then it was revealed in my hearing by the Lord of hosts, surely for this iniquity there will be no atonement for you, even to your death, says the Lord God of hosts. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, go proceed to this steward, to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, what have you here and whom have you here, that you have hewn a sepulcher here? As he who hews himself a sepulchre on high, who carves a tomb for himself in a rock. Indeed, the Lord will throw you away violently, O mighty man, and will surely seize you. He will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball into a large country. There you shall die, and there your glorious chariot shall be the shame of your master's house. So I will drive you out of your office, and from your position he will pull you down. Then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Helakiah. I will clothe him with your robe." And strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your responsibility into his hand. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder, so he shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place, and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. They will hang on him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the posterity, all vessels of small quantity, from the cups to all the pitchers. And that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg that is fastened in the secure place will be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was on it will be cut off, for the Lord has spoken. May God bless the reading of his word. May God bless you. Bye.